of CPU drain. All right, let's see if uh, this thing works. Very good. Of CPU. All right, pause that. And all right, I think we are live. All right, everybody, it is me, Johnson Chan. And it feels like it's been like years or months since I've done a Bitcoin clown world, even though it's, uh, you know, actually just been a week. All right, so let me put out the tweet. All right, so this, what's different about this one is I'm actually streaming this live on DLive because a lot has happened since the last Bitcoin clown world, both in terms of news and personally with me meeting the bag talk uh, uh, men. So a lot of a lot of crap, and I have to. So I'll probably just pretend like some of you are not uh, are completely new and only watching a Bitcoin uh, thingamajig. So let me see. Is my thing? Oh yeah, I got. Like, to pause this. I can read the ch I can read the chat from here because if I Alt Tab to see everything, the whole thing like gets all screwed up. I'm gonna double check. Yes, my proxy is on because I gotta ac access uh, Crux twenty four for this. So I don't accidentally dox myself with the, wait, what do I need to uh, do that for? So anyway, quite a bit to talk about. Um, are you under a replay? Relatively flat, so we have. Ah, really? There are four people watching. Oh, so they have replays now on DLive. That's pretty good. Uh, I could close these windows. Uh, well, I can pull that up if I need to. Because I, <clears throat> Cause the problem is if I do like the introduction stuff, like usually that you normally do to give people a chance to uh, come in. That's like, oh, I got to edit out more. So I'm just going to make it a little different, but I can just simply ramble on. And then uh, I guess people could catch the replay. Um, all right. So how do I want to start this? Uh, you know, I should have written in myself an outline of what I was going to say. Like my mind is so full of crap that I don't even know where to really start. But uh, all right, well, I guess we'll start with the political stuff. So first things first, uh, people are starting to lose hope, I guess. They like, they think just Trump's going to actually lose. Uh, and definitely my predicted bets have, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely reflect that. So now I'm only up like 500 bucks. And most of the losses actually come from, of course, the presidential vote margins. Uh, oh, good. I'm still. Huh, that's weird. I'm not logged in, but I can still. All right, that is so weird because sometimes Twitter's like, well, you gotta log in or whatever. So anyway, uh, it used to be up to like 2K, like 1200 to 2K. Now it's actually down to. Um, let's see if we can see it. So basically, this is at like minus 100 to minus 200. This is at minus 50 to minus 100. And the Wisconsin bet is down to like minus 120 bucks. And I'm still in the green on the uh, these clowns over here. All right. But and Nevada is at zero. And then these are like down to like plus 200 or plus 300 bucks or something. So yeah, black pills all around for market betters, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, that's just how it goes. Uh, and, you know, Trump's been doing a lot of tweet, uh, tweeting. He finally stopped, I think. Actually, he started to tweet a bunch of Fox News shit, and then I don't retweet OAN. So, uh, so that's why I can just go live now. Uh, yeah, it does seem like Twitter's finally, uh, you know, stopped cock blocking me. Even though, I mean, you can't see it, it says nineteen thousand six hundred sixty-one. So the follower growth rate, I think, is still increasing, but it's starting to slow down a bit. Uh, but I'm still gonna try to, you know, do that. Uh, you know, what I used to do in World of Warcraft and all my games, do that traditional Chinese gold farming. But instead of farming gold, I'm farming social media followers. So it's like, <laughs> you know, because, you know, we're going to have to eventually compete against uh, the Mike Sarages of the world. Ugh, you're right. So we'll be launching to that. So Trump retweeted <laughs> Kukovich, and I'm just so annoyed, right? It's like this guy is just... He, he says he's not a conservative, doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, yet he somehow sucks in all the uh, attention. I guess I want to get this out of the way. He sucks in all the attention and money, which sounds vaguely familiar, doesn't it? All right? It's the reason why Nick Fuentes has a no ego rule, right? which I'm generally, I'm only a little bit looser than that, but I'm still pretty strict on that because it's like, yeah, all right? but the ego rule actually extends to really all of us. right? If you're going to suck in all that 
media and money and attention, especially away from people like Michelle Malkin. Well, she doesn't really need it because she's already bigger than all of us for now, right? But if you're going to suck away from people like me or the bag talk people or um, Nick Fuentes, right? You know, I'm going to get kind of mad, right? Because, you know, we're out there doing the best we can with like practically nothing. And then we get fucked in the ass, right? In fact, let me see if I can find that tweet because JLP had one. Uh... Yeah, so I know plenty of blah, 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 blah. So, what, what is this? What, why is the GOP, like, we're putting more, more fake e-girls. I think that's a picture of Nicole Malatakis, which is my congresswoman, um, who also was a state senator or something like that. And then, but basically, she's definitely never Trump because, I mean, we follow each other on Twitter. Because unfortunately, people are like, oh, well, who follows you? Why should I listen to you? Mal, Malatakis. Yeah, Greek names are always very difficult. Yeah, that does look like, yeah, that is probably, yeah, that is her. Uh, let's go to her Twitter. In fact, let's do a test right now. Has she still said anything about the election fraud? She said communism. Bitching about New York City, which is fine because we're from New York City. Uh, New York City. Complain about Elhan Omar. Uh, retweets Marco Cucchio, of course, and bullshitting about China, right? I mean, yeah, China is bad, but, uh, where's, you know what's also bad? The lockdowns. You know what's also bad? The fucking election fraud. Where is it? Uh, blah, 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 assembly. Yep, more New York City. Yeah, see, I mean, I already know how this story plays out, but not a single, in fact, you know what? Control F Trump. Nothing. Zero. There's no word. There's no mention of the word Trump here. Gee, I wonder why. See, if I see because Mike Servages of the world take all the fucking social media shit, I can't attack her. All right. Even though we follow each other. Why? Because I have no fucking followers. Well, very few, except still as you are watching DLive and, you know, eventually this vi video on YouTube or wherever. Uh, okay. All right, as you know, we filed a lawsuit for here on the third of mayor's analysis. Okay, so this is a lawsuit about the school stuff. Big party Ted. She appears on CNN. Of course, nothing about. Yeah, this is just. Yeah, this is all just control. All right, I'm just starting to get. I mean, I don't get mad, but like, it's like I get mad without the emotion. It's it's exactly like Jesse Lee Peterson says. It's kind of weird. It's also kind of amazing. That's also good for my soul. So it's like whatever. Also, I don't think I'm, I don't, it doesn't say that Rudy's going to be at the hearing, but I'm not, I'm, is, I'm definitely just going to do Bitcoin Cloud World, and then uh, if I want to do the um, the hearing, I'll do a separate stream, but if Rudy's not there, I'm not, I mean, I might watch it off stream, but I'm not going to stream it, unless something really big happens. Yo, Charlie Kirk tweet, bold my blood. Uh, I guess we can take a look at what this grifter has to say. Uh... So anyway, I went on a diatribe about grifters, but this is exactly the problem. And of course, like Nick said, as he as he's been saying for weeks and months, where is Charlie Kirk? Where's TPUSA? Why the fuck are we paying out of pocket to do these, you know, rallies? Uh, and then we have to go to Ali Akbar because we don't have any other option to do this shit, right? You know. So and yeah, I did watch. Nick Fuentes has streamed the entirety of, of it, of course, yesterday. And, you know, he said some nice things. And, like, that's true. You know, Ali has been helping. But, I mean, I know, I know, I've seen this before. I know the grift. Do, if, if you're high status, Ali's going to treat you great. If you're a nobody like me, well, that will become somebody. He treats you like shit. That's not the Christian way. Jesus Christ specifically said, don't do that. All right? and, he, and there's, like, an actual Bible passage that he devotes a whole chapter to. Like, people who can do nothing for you, like, is very valuable in the eyes of God. Uh, I don't know, what particular, I, I just simply ran off on my thing, but, it, it, and, and that's the thing, too. Ali has a problem with empathy. That's why a lot of people don't like him. But it's hard for Nick to see that because he only sees the good stuff that out. I guess that's technically a good thing. But he only sees the front that Ali puts up. So it, it's going to definitely be a, you know... Uh, it's going to be a problem later, but it's not the biggest problem now. But I'm putting it out there now so that when you actually see, you know, the crack start breaking, right, you'll know the actual fundamentals of why that happens because it, it just doesn't happen out thin air. 
Uh, prescribed power bypass go right, we call special session. So that's right, that's what we want. Trying to legal team to McDonald and come here a lot and media silent. Uh, you can't say ignore amounts of evidence. Uh, well, I mean, Charlie Kirk is, seems to be doing the right thing. Uh, I don't know, just link in the DLive what the tweet is and I'll look at it, but uh, Baroque. Uh, so anyway, uh, I don't know, I lost my train of thought with that rambling. So let's just get into the uh, crypto stuff and then we'll move into the news and other politics stuff. But for the most part, Trump's fighting hard. You know, he's, I mean, he has to fight hard because no real choice. And uh, I don't know, for now, I just want to try to focus on just, just January 20th. You know, if it only when Trump is going to act, is, is actually lost and it's January 20th and there are no more options, then I will start thinking about the contingencies. I don't want to think about or even talk about the contingencies simply because, you know, there's already enough people getting discouraged. So I don't want to contribute to that pile. And I still have to watch for my morale too, which isn't too bad, but I know a lot can happen. All right, so Bitcoin searches for this week. Interesting, I've crashed to 17. That's very weird. That's actually really good for us because that means the bull run will continue. So, I mean, we did have a pullback over the weekend too. So maybe that's what happened. Uh, so Bitcoin seems to have recovered. I'm going to refresh this one more time because when I woke up this morning, like three, four hours ago, no, it was like three, two and a half hours ago, yeah, Bitcoin would crash to like 18.5K. So now it looks like it's recovered. So Bitcoin's at 19,300 somewhat. Uh, XRP is starting to finally settle down. It's still at 62.8 cents. Litecoin's at 91.34. All right, because the because I bought a batch of Litecoin for my tax, for my long-term play, at around $91, $92. So I've now officially am in total net profit with all my Litecoin holdings, my insurance fund. That's why I'm able to just go gamble shit on predicted, right? So, so that's really good. So Litecoin is finally getting their day in the sun because this thing has just been so laggard behind Bitcoin. It still is. I mean, it should be 300, 325 to 350, but oh well, I'll take what I can get. Uh, Stellar Lumens is also starting to cool down. All right, so it looks like things have kind of gone, like they're basically trying to go back to what they were, I guess, yesterday when things were looking like it was Bitcoin to 20K. So they're basically, what is it, retesting the the ceiling, I think. So very good, very good. Uh, 24 rounds, 111.7 billion. So that probably means it's like 230, 240 billion on coin market cap. All right, so markets are up uh, back to 30K. Facebook backed digital coin renamed Diem. Diem. Wow, they were able to get the trademark for Diem. Uh, so let's see. Oh, yeah, because there's so much angry negative press of Libra. I guess Facebook's like, okay, we need to change the search results. So let's just rebrand Libra to Diem. All right, we're not going to read it, but okay, that's fine. So, all right, so Microsoft, yeah, we don't care because it's always stable. Region Financial still yeah, a little under 16. Rummel's at $5.29. All right, so my stocks are doing pretty great. What the hell is, is this, that it, okay. I thought that was a woman and then there was a, that looks really pato bear. I'm, I'm gonna not, I'm gonna try to go, go away from that. Stocks rise as traders look to extend November rally. Uh, I don't know. I don't really see my trust in this is so low that I kind of don't want to read any of this, you know, new shit because I just don't believe anything. Oh, yeah. I saw this in the finance chat in Bagto. It says NASDAQ proposes board diversity requirement for. Okay. So actually, I do want to read this because if Globo Pato is going to continue to ram us in the ass, you know, I'd we'll like to see what's coming. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's extremely hard to kind of pass in their stimulus bill. That's a video. I don't want to watch that. Um, face digital tax starting 2022, Canada says. <laughs> this is by Bazinga. Actually, we might want to read that because that technically falls under the purview of big tech regulation. I mean, this was reported yesterday, but I, I don't think I want to read this because it's just going to say, I mean, we could probably... Yeah, it, it's just like, oh yeah, antitrust, and then no actual details, so we could, we could skip that. 
No stock options. Well, I guess we don't need to look at this anymore, right? Because I'm already using Ledger X. Um, actually, I should have done a screenshot of my Ledger X positions. So, oh, this is actually new. I didn't mention, yeah, this is new from, okay. So, so for a while now, I've been saying we need a way to short the Bitcoin cryptocurrency markets, right? And I specifically want to buy and sell, buy options at least. So I, and, and so far I've looked just about anywhere. And as American, this is the only place I can go to ledgerx.com. Uh, and I can't show you the market because you have to have an account, which they then ver KYC AML verify you. So you can't even use this unless, uh, if, unless you uh, give them your IDs and shit. So in this case, I gave them my, my state issued ID card for New York. So, uh, so the way Ledger X works is it's basically like any options market, right? And it has the same rules, strike prices, expiration date, blah, 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 goes up and goes down as it goes further or as it goes close, as it gets closer or further away from uh, the thingamajig, the strike price. So obviously, um, so uh, you can fund this with Bitcoin or you can fund this with wire deposits. Now, I did not know I could fund it with Bitcoin because it always just kept asking me, fund it with your, uh, hook up your bank account, hook up your bank account. I was like, oh, God. So I had to, so I had to spend like 30, 40 minutes doing the wire transfer because A, was a new thing. And two, I had to replace my bank's application for the mobile phone authentication thing. And then they came out with a new app that override and then. Basically, I was stuck in a catch-22 situation where I couldn't access my phone code because the new, the old app kept saying, get the new app, and the new app says, we need your phone code, and I couldn't access it. it was, yeah. So anyway, I dealt with that stupid shit. I got, I got my account Ledger X. So it's a pain in the ass to fund it with wire transfers. I had to pay a $30 fee because I'm no longer uh, elite rich status because, you know, I've been losing 50 to 70 <laughs> 50 to 70 bucks a day every day for like a couple years uh and we're gonna talk about that because you know crypto has just got uh, all our old coin mining has gone to total dog shit so anyway uh yeah start actually putting money and trying to make money off of this so that's why i'm uh now i have call options i have 35 positions of it now it's called a bitcoin mini but the, but each mini is one percent of a bitcoin so the real price is actually 1% of whatever you see here. So it's not 500, it's $5 per contract for a bid. And the ask price is actually 12, uh, $13 uh, per contract. So, so I have 35 of these, so that's 35% of a Bitcoin. And I bought this a while ago. So whatever the date on this is, November 30th. Uh, now I bought it before that, so it's like two days ago. So. I, since I didn't uh, do the screenshot, I'm just going to go over to Chrome real quick and see what it's at. Uh, hold on. So uh, it probably didn't go up too much, but it was getting pretty good. Uh, so right now it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's at five, So right now the bid's at $555 on Ledger X right now for this exact contract, 75K strike, June 25th, 2021. So when Bitcoin was actually approaching 20,000, this thing shot up to a thousand bucks to like 1500. So this thing is making a lot of money already. And that's, that's great. I buy the cheapest, um, actually maybe what I should have done was maybe buy, uh, this one over here, the $800. Actually, no, I couldn't have bought the $800 one because the ask price is almost $3,000. So it's like, you know, what? I'll get the cheaper one because the way we make money is Bitcoin skyrockets. Uh, we don't care if it hits the strike price. We care that it reaches the strike price. It attempts to reach the strike price of $75,000 very quickly and as soon as possible. Actually, I just repeated myself there. Then the value of this option, because the gamblers start coming in, they start buying this shit up. And then we sell in like, in my case, I'm going to probably sell these options around March. And then I'm going to buy a new call option because I need to, because right now I need to play time. Not the market, but time, because you know how I, for those of you who are new, uh, I played the time and safety, all right, uh, which I wish I should have done with predicted, but, uh, you know, I trust the plan, so I'm going to go just, I'm going to just go down with the ship if that's the case. I mean, we're all going to lose money if Trump loses, so, you know, just whatever. Um, so, um, I... 
it's a little hard to see because the interface sucks, but I think when if Bitcoin hits around say thirty, forty thousand uh, dollars in the middle of March, the second week of March, let's say, the value of this option will be around. It should be anywhere from like six to ten thousand dollars for the ask price, and the bid price will be lower than that because the liquidity is still a problem. But basically, I'm still going to make anywhere from five hundred percent to like two thousand percent on my money. So I took my three hundred twenty dollars. That's how much it cost me uh, ultimately to get the uh, these options, and then it turns into five to twenty x that. So that's way better than having to spend my wire transfer money. Because uh, technically, I'm still losing money every day, right? And, and then, uh, yeah, and then more importantly, we're funding the Ledger X account because once once everything's in position, then we start um, shorting the markets. Now, it's going to be riskier because you know I only have a one year time frame to work with because that's what Ledger X um, uh, allows, and this bull run could go for two years. It could go for three years. So. E, you know, it's gonna, it's just, uh, it's gonna get complicated. So, but you know, we'll just have to, just, just play it like that. Or I could actually do, I think it's called a straddle, where you buy both a call and a put, uh, which might work in this case because the value gain is so much higher than the fixed loss that you incur when doing straddle. I don't usually do straddles, assuming that's the right term, in the stock market because. Because those assholes use trade machine bots and they actually already figure that out and just extract all the money. So it's no point in straddling. But but in cryptocurrency, that can work. All right. You know, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, hopefully everyone was able to keep up with that. What do you use to trade crypto? Uh, if you mean by the cryptocurrency exchange, we use a couple, uh, quite a few. But I actually use Crex24. Now, the problem is Americans can't use it. So you have to use a... Uh, See, for legal purposes, I gotta make sure I cover my ass. But basically, the computer that you use to access Crex24 cannot be um, from America, Canada, I think Israel, and Great Britain. Wait, that's the wrong one. And Great Britain. Oh, yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love that vapor AF. So, uh, so that's all I can say, because uh, I don't want to have a record of me potentially getting into legal trouble and then I get sued. I don't follow how trade bots would overpower straddle. Oh, it's because everyone's buying and selling all the uh, options and call options, like the put and calls and whatever. So the, so the price actually approaches what it's really supposed to be worth. And then it gets jacked up. I like it's like basically it's just not worth it like the 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 cost of the options already like uh costs more than the potential uh reward that i'm going to get when i sell those options so that's basically what i mean is because they're able to exercise no no it has nothing to do with that Uwan. it's um uh what what has it what has what has what has options i guess we can go into this uh so let's say I wanted to do oh man my mind my mind is mush but if I wanted to oh man I have to do some more research uh, it's a little hard for me to explain but basically the value of these call options especially the long-term ones is so expensive that the potential price differential of any movement that I want personally isn't it enough to cover the cost of me buying both of those options, both both the calls and puts, right? Because there's only because let's say I wanted to do that strategy on Microsoft. Well, the problem is Microsoft's not really going to go down or up by fifty bucks or six or a hundred bucks, right? It might go up by a hundred, right? I mean, depending on the election and stuff. But it's not really like it's a big company. It's got like literally, literally eleven trillion shares, and I'm going to be paying up the wazoo. Uh, let's say I wanted September. So let's say I wanted to do something like the middle of 20, 2022. So that's like a year and a half from now. All right. I'm going to have to spend 570. Wait, I have to spend maybe around, yeah, let's say the average, right? 570 bucks for one call option. And then for the same put option, like how, like, look, well, it gets very expensive. Look how expensive these call options, put down options become. So if I want to straddle, it'll be like three, like here's a cheap one. That's 
How much I spend? 570. There isn't even anyone for 500 something. So let's see if we can get something reasonable. Yeah, the only one that's reasonable is this $140 strike price. I mean, are I really going to believe Microsoft's going to crash to 33%? Right? Especially since Bill Gates is in charge of like uh, everything. So, so as you see, I'm paying a lot of money. So it's like, this is going to cost me $1,100, $1,200 in call options. But I mean, it, in, in that amount of time, is the thing going to really go up uh, enough to override the cost and give me profit? It, it's uh, not only is there, it's, it's risky to me personally because I don't make enough money to offset the cost of doing a straddle. And that's mostly because the, look at this, the, it's 214 bucks. If it maybe goes to 350, that's considered like an all time, like the whole world would literally have to buy Microsoft stock. But that that's why this doesn't work for me. However, if we go to crypto, it totally happens because it goes from this to like a million dollars. Like the price differential is so massive that the cost of me buying the option is negligible. And that's what I'm uh, looking for. Right? So hopefully that uh, whew, uh, clarifies it. So a straddle depends on big moves to offset the loss of the inferior option contract. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, actually, yeah. So yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So that's what it's called, inferior option contract. Yeah, exactly, the inferior option contract, because one, because it's going to go somewhere, or they could both become inferior contracts if it just flatlines. But we know Bitcoin does not flatline, right? Because you know we've already gone through the two-year bear market, or however long it lasted, three years. Whew. Okay, I gotta breathe. Um, so yeah, we're kind of popping off. Uh, I didn't really refresh it, but thanks to everyone on BitChute and YouTube for subscribing. Uh, so let's get some articles for crypto, and then we'll uh, we'll, call, we'll read the articles and call it. Uh, read Libra rebounds. Yeah, I'm gonna shake off associations. Yeah, I, I already went over that. Crashes below. Nope. Uh, Genesis block of beacon chain winks into ex yeah. nah. Russia's Alpha Bank offers blockchain platform for freelancers. And I kind of don't want to read it, but this is good because for whatever reason, the Russian government has a real big problem with crypto. Like they have a they have a more hate love relationship, right? Like 80% hate, 20%. Well, all right. Uh, but this is good. You know, uh, you know, more mainstream adoption. Bitcoin price hits. Okay. You know, you already know that. Uh, here are the fantastic graphics. Bitcoin too, they aims to raise a million dollars for good causes. Uh, well, it's not really that many. Okay. There's a couple minorities in here. Uh, all right. Uh, Christian music chart toppers join crypto arena with digital fan token. Yeah, I mean, traditional cryptocurrencies are, oh, I forgot to go over prices. I forgot about that. We'll do that right after this. Um, yeah, I mean, I can read the whole thing. I just wanna browse it real quick. All right, so that's good. So, so when I come on my game, hopefully we can still implement the BTC pay thing. But, you know, all the rage is always like these Ethereum based or Ethereum knockoff based uh, cryptocurrency tokens. So, uh, which makes sense because from a technical perspective, it's a lot easier to accept uh, tokens as crypto payments as, as opposed to traditional cryptocurrencies. So that's, that's actually another big fundamental reason why I think why, you know, these prices for, you know, really just a lot of cryptos is just, you know, going to shit. Because people are like, well, why do I want that when I can have like a bat token or something? Universal probably choose a tradable carbon token. Oh, God. All this left-wing crap. Uh, Coinbase can't, but I mean, whatever. And people use crypto, then that's what we care about. The more mainstream it goes, the bigger the bull run. Coinbase, actually, or Bitcoin treasury. Okay, how is there actually nothing of interest here? All right, well, there doesn't seem to be anything of interest. So, um, hmm. I need, all right, you know what? We'll use this as the thumbnail for my video. So we'll put that at the end. Um, all right, so let's go over this. So now I have all six windows open, but because, uh, you know, but because I'm doing bag talk now, it's like, well, I better not, cause I don't, cause I don't turn on my VPN for bag talk. Cause I don't want to have to deal with the lag issues. Cause obviously I'm in New York, but I'm communicating with you know, Brazil, Sao Paulo. So it's, 
You know, there's a nice little lag time, and it has to communicate back. All right, so JFC coins at one to two sub Satoshis. It's just going to continue to get killed. Um, I mean, unfortunately, because Bitcoin and major cryptos are skyrocketing, where like altcoin altcoin mining is basically dead. With the I don't want to say dead the way we're doing it, but the prices are just going to get clobbered, like you wouldn't believe. I think only four or four coins is the only one doing okay. But uh, this too will eventually drop. So it's at twenty six to twenty seven Satoshis of a Bitcoin. Um, so the buying pressure is all right, but again, you know, once Bitcoin hits 25, 30, 40 K and like all bets are off, uh, let's see, what's the next one? Oh yeah. Two by two, two by two has also been getting killed too. Even the trade volume is starting to get, uh, crappy. Uh, that's the other problem. Like trade volume, like a lot of people, like the, like the total, like, what do you call this? The buying interest is also declining. So. Yeah, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. Um, you know, so it's at one to two Satoshis, but eventually it's going to drop uh, as well. Rix is actually doing okay, too. Uh, again, because they're basically pilfering off of the brick and Morty uh, intellectual property. But uh, again, it's going down too. Now it's at four to five. So it's eventually going to go all, go all the same way. And of course, the most irritating thing of all of this is the new cryptos that I created, which are also still continuing to go down, even though they're fixed. So, you know, like uh, the buying interest is also very low for 100 coin. I believe speed coins the same way too. So it's at 7.8 to 8 uh, Satoshis of Bitcoin. And it's just very aggravating. Even with the trading contest ending, it's like people didn't really buy. So basically nobody wants any crypto except the majors. So uh, it's way undervalued, but unfortunately there's not much I can really do about it. So... Yeah, we're just going to have to dig in, uh, I guess. But, well, uh, it's an indicator that, uh, where is it? You know, yeah, the majors are going to keep going up. Because if people didn't think the majors are going to go up, they would be buying these cryptos. So it's just it's just so damn annoying. Because this really kills my income. So now I'm, I think I'm down to like making 20 bucks a day or something. Yeah, so there's that. And then speed, co oh, God. Uh Speed, I spelled it wrong. Speed coin is kind of doing okay, but it's also undergoing all like massive pressure. Luckily, I've set. Luckily, I had enough foresight to really make the coin minting five per block, so that's why it's still holding all right. And I'm finally seeing. Actually, I'm seeing more buying interest for speed coin. So I'm just really irritated with. It. Um, I mean, this price will still be pretty stable. It'll still keep going down as Bitcoin exponentially goes up to like literally the moon. Uh, but this will hold better than all the rest because obviously the rate of inflation is, uh, you know, uh, the lowest with this coin. So, um, but still, it's kind of irritating. And let's see, trade fund is 136 bucks. So, I mean, well, uh, we'll just have to see. Let me go back to 100 coin. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely plenty of supply, so I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens to 100 coin. But people are really poo pooing on it. Actually, I want to see if I need to ban anybody on the big co on the 100 coin thread. Yeah, nothing there. Okay. All right. Let me see. Uh, so what crypto? I would recommend all of you to simply buy the major cryptos. I wouldn't even recommend doing the altcoin mine like I'm doing. Uh, well, A, because the price keeps going down, but then B, uh, whatchamacallit, I'm not sure if you guys are willing to just simply take a laptop and then mine the crypto. I mean, it's technically free money, but the price drops are what's going to damage you psychologically, and I kind of just don't want to have to deal with teaching people how to get over that. Yeah, Monero is good. Uh, stable coins, I mean, stable coins are obviously just temporary coins, so... Yeah, but if I were you guys, just Litecoin is my preference. You can buy Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum. Uh, XRP will probably be okay, but really any top 50 to top 100. But really, if you want to build, say, top 25 coins on coin market cap. Uh, but I'm sticking with Litecoin because it gives me a, a very good. Um, it gives me the. It basically has everything of, has all the qualities of Bitcoin, but it's just cheaper. So and it's also faster because I really don't like 
if I send Bitcoin, I have to wait two to five days because I got unlucky, Forsen style. That's a real problem because I only move money when I really need to move the money. So, you know, you know, I use Litecoin. Uh, oh god, uh, I was trying to figure. I thought that was a that was a per that was a guy holding another person and twirling around fast, but it's actually a bike handle, I think. No, that no, that is a monkey. Oh, that's a monkey. Okay, you are uh, twirling someone. <laughs> Just happens to be a monkey. I think I'm trying to show Monero. Is good. Yeah, Monero could work, but um, I don't know. I don't really even check Monero. Uh, but if it follows the same th pattern as pretty much Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin or whatever, then yeah, that's probably fine. Because again, the play is buy crypto now, keep mining it, keep farming it, and then sell, hold it, and then sell it all like before the bull run collapses. So, but again, there's a lot of uncertainty because of this stupid idiot election. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably watch this off stream. All right, anyway, uh, let's see, stock market live updates, blah, blah, blah. I, I seriously hate these autoplay things. Stocks rose, equities, 2020 record. November, each of the three, blah, blah, blah. Many equity will continue to ride a wave of vaccine-related optimism after Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca reported, you know, good coronavirus results. In early November, when we saw the VIX spike to 40, it was because of blah, 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 blah. Okay, currency, you see VIX coming down low as where it is today by nearly blah, blah, blah. There's definitely a lot of reasons to be exposed to equities now and into the near future. Optic, okay, whatever. Um, all right, but while equities melt to higher number risks to the U.S. guys so at least near term, uh, blah, 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 Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. Oh, so he is the, okay, I always confuse him with Janet Yellen. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell reiterated that economic growth will likely continue to be capped if people are confident that it's safe to re-engage in a broad range of activities, which will never happen if Trump loses because they're going to make the lockdown forever. Recent news on the vaccine front is very positive for near term. Uh, it's just a bunch of whatever. Okay, so nothing actually new. I'm gonna hit the X on that. All right, so NASDAQ proposes more SJW cuckoldry. Okay, so the NASDAQ is on Tuesday, that's today, filed a proposal with the SEC that if proposed will acquire, did I say proposed? Proposed, or if approved, will require all NASDAQ listed companies adopt new rules related to board diversity and disclosure or pot potentially face delisting. The new rules will require most NASDAQ listed companies to have or probably explain why they do not have at least, geez, global, global pedo can't even help themselves. They have to even come after this. Like this is why people are getting pissed off. Like, and I just wish more boomers would just tap in and get even more pissed off about this shit. Which is kind of happening, right? We saw, at least when I did the live stream, we saw Nick Fuentes give uh, another speech like later in the day. And, you know, I actually noticed that there were boomers uh, coming in and listening. And not a lot, but just some. So boomers are receptive to our our message, as Nick says. So, uh, yeah, our goal of the pro is to provide transparency, blah, blah, blah. We believe this Swiss thing rule is one step in a broad to achieve inclusive representation. I seriously can't stand this. Yeah, if, I, if we were to restrict speech, I would make it so, I mean, I already said this, but basically, yeah, constitutional amendment to, oh, I'm going to post this on YouTube. Yeah, so there's like anti-homosexual uh, propaganda laws in Russia, and everyone knows my stance on that. If, if we were to propose the same exact thing or very similar thing, in the U.S. Constitution here in America, so I'll leave it at that. All right, Cause I can't actually advocate for hours. I'll get my fucking shit struck. I fucking hate censorship so much. Foreign companies and smaller companies would have additional flexibility. Oh yeah, so I'll just say that if we had something like that in America, then something like this would actually be made illegal. So and then you you wouldn't be allowed to say stuff like this. So and then funny enough, there would be fines or even prison terms for people who propose something like this. 
Foreign companies and small companies have additional flexibility. It's satisfying. Okay, I don't want to read any more of this shit because it's just going to make me uh, uh, tilted. Facebook, Google. Actually, I don't feel tilted, but I just pretend. I don't know. How do you describe the effects of emotion without feeling the emotion? It's really quite a remarkable. Like, J J JLP was really right about this stuff, forgetting your mom and dad, and telling them to their face if it's physically safe to do so in their own life. All right, so big tech to face taxes in Canada starting in two years, in, in about a year or so. So Fang will have to start paying a digital tax in Canada beginning 2022. I actually like this because A, the product is free, and then B, they steal all your info, and then you are the product, right? And they grift and take all the money. So yeah, take their money. Also, this opens the door for regulating big tech. So this is another attack vector we can use to try to rein in these uh, censorious F-word assholes. What happened? Techs on digital service will stay in place until nations can agree on a unified approach to taxation of FANG or big tech. The tax will be levied beginning January 1st, 2022. So that's 13 months from now, exactly 13 months from now uh, to the day. And is expected to raise revenues for Canada by 2.6 billion over a period of five years. So that's not even a lot of money. Canada will act unilaterally if necessary to apply a tax on large multinationals. So blah, 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 blah. Uh, which is funny because, you know, these assholes are in bed with the government. So uh, I don't know how this will even work. In addition to digital tax, foreign based vendors with no presence in Canada will also have to collect sales tax on products such as mobile apps, video gaming. And so this actually affects me. This measure is expected to raise almost a little under a billion US dollars over five years. Uh, so they're taxing mobile applications. That'll be interesting. That'll be kind of interesting because I because what happens if you have to pay a you know sales tax? Yeah, this is gonna be hard because how the hell are you supposed to collect? Well actually they'll make the, they'll make big tech collect the taxes, that's right. Because if I had because because of the election chaos shit, I haven't actually worked on my game and put it, uh, started figuring out how to put in mobile ads and then get it ready for the Google Play Store. But uh, yeah, I mean, Google, in that case, Google would just collect the sales tax for me anyway and take it out of my uh, cut. The Canadian government is also applying to blah, 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 why matters, new imposition of digital tax. Um, but Fang has also received a huge tax bill from Frenchies who also want millions of euros in digital tax from the Fang stocks. So the imposition of digital taxes by foreign governments has evoked threats of retaliation from outgoing Trump administration. Come on, man. You gotta be effing kidding me. So big tech's fucking Trump in the ass. I mean, this might be the rogue elements of the Trump admin, I guess. But Trump's getting fucked in the ass by big tech, and he's still going to bat for big tech. Like, I just... It's, a, it's all so tiresome. It's all so tiresome. All right, but... All right, so... Yeah, aside from market news, it's actually kind of quiet. Um, you know, I guess, I guess in the preceding week or two, we'll see if uh, crypto and the markets continue to skyrocket. Again, the... Problem is the election crap. It's just so unstable. Uh, I actually want to mute this and I just want to see uh, What's going on here? Do we see Rudy Giuliani here anywhere? Uh, more charts more stuff uh, Oh, this is pretty good optics actually we can see protesters out here I guess they're not afraid of getting shot in the head by like assassins on the outside I, I mean unless it's bulletproof glass or something uh, this is not a good sign. I see the council wearing their cuck muzzle masks, so that's not a good sign. Where is this taking place? Michigan. Yeah, of course. Alright, yeah, I'm not gonna watch. I mean, I might watch it off stream, but I'm not holding out too much hope. So, let me get the, uh, thing prepared here. Alright, there's our thumbnail. So, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the, oh, actually, I should read the comments first. I forgot about that. Uh, I don't trade crypto at all. I just bought Chaley for the memes, but it fell off a bit. Uh, I don't know what IG means. See John McAfee say good things about Monero. Um, well, fuck John McAfee. He 
propped up Bitcoin, then gaslit it, and then made a bunch of stupid claims. I don't like John McAfee. You know, like if you, I actually have really begun to really hate influencers that betray us and gaslighters. Like they're the worst people. They literally have no uh, principles. Can you share any knowledge about DeFi curve? I don't know anything of that stuff a lot except maybe DeFi. And the only thing I only know about DeFi is um, it's a good thing. Because um, the more that we have decentralized commerce, the better we'll be in kind of trying to combat um, financial censorship. Uh, but again, if Trump loses, then a lot of this is just going to be more of like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just be relegated to being, you know, thorns on the side of the globalists until the globalists figure out a way to co-opt it. But either uh, either way, all this curve, A, DeFi stuff, it's all actually very good stuff. It's just a matter of who's going to control the good stuff, right? The internet was great until the global pedo. I, had to, I can't say what I really want to say because I'm going to post this on YouTube. You know, but, you know, until Global Pato finally struck and then took all our shit away, you know, so, uh, but if we ever get a second chance, I want to make sure that I'm the guy in charge or very close to being at the top of, you know, everything uh, to be able to really influence this stuff. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how effective we can be with, you know, taking over local and state committees and local GOP office and local races and state races and all that stuff. Because even though we have everything on our side, the local and state governments are fucking us in the ass. They're cucking us really bad. Georgia, Arizona, uh, oh, I already closed it. Nevada, right? Michigan, like, wh wh what have you. <sighs> but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Prince, you introduced the LGBT... Are you serious? Please don't tell me that's true. I, 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 God. Uh, yeah. All right, what is this? I would just want to say gay, but you know, just getting, I'm going to get banned on Twitter if I said that. I do want to respond to this. Um, Oh, he's at CNBC. He, he's probably fine. I'm not going to farm the replies on this, though. So, because I might actually get in serious uh, trouble. Uh, hold on. Uh, I, so, I go to the tweet. Uh, they just can't help themselves, can they? Uh, well, at least Rimmel is doing well. So they better keep paying me those fat dividends. All right. I think that should be a pretty safe tweet. I think because I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't say anything. I didn't mention the word gay. I didn't. I didn't say any of that. I just said uh, they just can't help themselves, can they? Well, at least Rebel's doing well, so they better keep paying me those fat dividends. So yeah, this is a very safe tweet because, you know, it's like, you know, I, I got to be like the tribe that I cannot name or hint at, right? It's got to be subtle and get ready to, you know, uh, even when the time comes for betraying America and Jesus Christ, right? So uh, anyway, um, yeah, all right. So that's the with comments. Uh, so if you like what you saw, yeah. Read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from where you're watching this from. One of my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash JMC Radio. Make sure you smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page so we can continue growing this channel. Also, my bit shoot, Real Johnson Chan. And I actually do like being on um, Bag Talk, so I, I guess at this point I'm considered like a, like a regular here. Um, so. It's actually interesting. Rerun or a replay? I wonder how much. I wonder how much resources. Oh yeah, that's right. Justin Sun now owns D Live or something, uh, which basically makes this a Chinese-owned company, D Live. <laughs> so, you know, I bet if Alex Jones wasn't so crazy on like the anti-China, anti-CCP stuff, he would actually still be on D Live. Um, but on the other hand, he doesn't really like talking about uh, uh, the the tribe in the Middle East that we can't name or hint at. 
So that's just how it goes, right? So anyway, um, I'll probably be on Bag Talk tomorrow because they usually do it Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and now that I think things might be kind of quieting on down a little bit, I kind of want to catch up both of my game to reset my mind and just relax. And also, I do want to go back to coding because I keep getting uh, emails from Appodeal, which is these guys. I keep getting emails, which I think are just the automated emails, but the simple fact that, oh, come on. You know, I'm on a one gigabyte connection with Verizon and, okay, all right, I guess we'll have to use this. But basically this is a mobile app monetization aggregator and they're really good. And they sign up with like all of them. So it's a one-stop shop. So these guys keep sending me emails because I do want, because I'm going to implement this into my game seditionist right for google play so that probably means they must be making a lot of money so they have a huge financial incentive so that's a very good indicator for me so i, I should get into that and yeah i'll make a couple bucks but it's more important just to get the message out and just get the process started of the, the you know the social media farming and the money farming but really the social media influence farming because it will take time, right? Because I've been on Twitter for like forever, March 2016. I'm still getting cucked by the shadow ban, uh, but I'm finally getting some kind of traction. So about maybe in two, three, or I guess four years, I'll be at the point where Nick Fuentes is right now, right? Because he's been doing this shit a long time. Mike Sturridge has been doing it apparently for like 12 years or whatever. Ali Akbar has been doing it for uh, about the same time, even before it's social media. So yeah, but you know, I still have some tricks up my sleeve, especially uh, when uh, Bitcoin hits 500 grand to a million, right? My, my, my call was 500 grand, but it could very well go to a million or two. Like this is the big one. This is the big one. Uh, um, wait, no, that's Carter on the Bag Talk, yes. So anyway, um, I will see you all either tomorrow at Bag Talk or next Tuesday or so, or next week in that video. There's obviously gonna be like a million newsworthy things, so. We'll see what happens, but uh, keep fighting and don't lose hope. And then remember, just don't give up until like January 20th when Joe Biden's actually getting sworn in. Right? Until then, uh, no black pills. Right? Anyway, see you all uh, next time. Thanks. Johnson Chan, uh, JMC Coin, 100 Coin, Speed Coin. I really maybe do need to reduce some of this. Uh, Seditionist Tower Defense, and let's see, am I still at seven reviews? Uh, yeah, see, I gotta make a multiplayer game, because I wanted to make my Tower Defense game multiplayer, but it's way beyond my ability to code right now, so we're, you know, it's stuck. And, uh, yeah, here's uh, our thumbnail.